Previously on The Way We Did It, we took our truck camper to Theodore Roosevelt National Park, where things didn't exactly go as planned. We continue our theme of remote and isolated places and go to Petrified Forest and White Sands National Parks. Since adopting Hatch, Dave and I have been looking for pet-friendly national parks to take him to. Turns out, our neighboring states have two of them. Petrified Forest National Park and White Sands National Park. On top of being pet-friendly, both parks protect natural wonders of geology, with petrified wood in one and gypsum sand in the other. But little did we know our geologic journey would begin at our halfway point in Trinidad, Colorado. Located in the mountains of Southern Colorado is Trinidad Lake State Park, an unassuming place to see one of the world's most significant geologic features, the KT Boundary. Exposed on a rock outcropping south of Trinidad Lake is a thick layer of prehistoric rock that scientists believe indicate when an asteroid hit Earth 65 million years ago. In essence, we were touching the point in time when dinosaurs were wiped out. It was a pretty serendipitous start to our trip. What do you think, bud? I'm trying to find the dateline too. That's a stick. Our first order of business in Petrified Forest National Park was to get Hatch certified as a bark ranger. To say Petrified Forest is pet friendly is an understatement. Unlike most national parks that have heavy pet restrictions, here they are allowed on any paved road or trail as well as all designated wilderness area. Hatch is now officially a bark ranger. It says so right here, but he must. Bag his poop, always wear a leash, respect wildlife and know where he can go. As part of his official bark ranger package, he has a bark ranger badge, a couple of poo poo bags stuck together with a crazy st sticker that contains not one, but two biscuits. Ooh, look at that hatch. Look at that too. <laughs> yeah. Petrified Forest is comprised of two units. We began in the North Unit, which showcased expansive vistas of the Painted Desert. The Painted Desert Inn once supplied Route 66 travelers with meals, souvenirs, and lodging. It's gone through several renovations throughout the years, from the CCC to the notable Mary Coulter, which is why it's now recognized as a National Historic Landmark. Speaking of Route 66, Petrified Forest is the only national park with a portion of the historic highway within its boundary. And this rad 1932 Studebaker marks where it once passed through. Dave's driving it. <laughs> 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 Hello, Liam. 
<laughs> what do you think of this thing? It's pretty cool. Yeah, you can see the raised bed from where the road went down and then the train right beside it with the telegraph poles. I can't imagine driving this. In this. In this, yeah. We crossed over I-40 into the south unit of the park and took Hatch out on his first trail, even though he refused to wear his Bark Ranger bandana. Your yeah. Desert survival bandana. <laughs> Official. There we go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Got this off. <laughs> Along the trail, we saw petroglyphs, in a partially excavated Pueblo. And now for the main event, the petrified wood. Oh, I got some a good joke. Look at Gat. <laughs> Look at Gat. <laughs> no, that wasn't a good joke. <laughs> it's an agate bridge. <laughs> Coming to you live from the Crystal Forest. Petrified Forest National Park. Look at that crystal. I can feel the healing vortex of the crystal forest surging through my body. All of this wood. It's not really this rock, baby. This petrified mulch. Actually, I was making that up. It is petrified. What? Jim. That's petrified mulch. Look at that. Yeah. I was just making that up, but it's true. That's wild. Millions of years ago, these logs were washed away into an ancient river system and were buried so quick and so deep that oxygen was cut off. This significantly slowed down the decaying process. Over thousands of years, the minerals that were being absorbed into the porous wood crystallized and replaced the organic matter as it broke down. This is where the large jewel-like crystals of clear quartz, purple amethyst, and yellow citrine were formed. An important thing to note about this national park is that it actually closes every evening to deter people from stealing the petrified wood. And by the way, that's wind knocking the sign around. It was a little gusty that day. What's going on, Shan? It's a little windy. It's so windy, I can't even wear my hat. It's so windy. <laughs> the crystal wizard. <laughs> We luckily had just enough time to visit the Rainbow Forest Museum and Visitor Center, which had its own trail that featured some of the largest petrified logs in the park. One in particular was called Old Faithful that stretched over 35 feet long, 10 feet across, and weighed nearly 44 tons. Old Faithful, which I disagree with the naming because that's a geyser. I don't know what's faithful about this. Maybe it's just old log. Old Faithful Fuck. Show us how long it is. Or why. They say 10 feet. Yeah. That's pretty feet. wide. Pretty cool. 
This was the end of the 28 mile park road. Our full day in petrified forest ended up being plenty of time to see the majority of the park. So now let's go check out the campground. We were staying at the Holbrook Petrified Forest KOA. It's the closest full service campground to the national park located 23 miles west of the south entrance. We booked a pull-through 30 amp site with full hookups and a picnic table. Along with the tent and RV sites, there were also cabins, a play area and pool, a dog run and pet walking area, and a chuck wagon cafe, which we took full advantage of the next morning. All right, Dave, what do we have for breakfast? I went to the chuck wagon. I picked up a little mm -hmm. French toast. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of whatever that is, cinnamon <laughs> butter, maybe. I picked mm -hmm. up a little short stack. Mm -hmm. A little over medium and some bacon. Nice. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> Good morning, Hatchie. Good morning. It's time to mark off another national park. Here we go. Petrified forest. There we go. Nice. Yes. What do you think, Hatch? And for those who don't have time to visit the national park, don't worry. The campground has its own petrified wood on display. hanging in the car. A couple of dudes in New Mexico. White Sands National Park was a short and sweet visit. To get there, we first had to drive through the White Sands Missile Range, an active military testing site. In fact, you'll want to keep an eye on the National Park's website for any upcoming military closures of the area. The missile range was established during World War II and was a key location of the Manhattan Project. Located just 60 miles north of the National Park is the Trinity Site, where the first atomic bomb was detonated. At the start of the Dunes Drive Scenic Road was the Visitor Center. Inside was a museum and gift shop. From there, it was an eight mile drive into the heart of the sand dunes. What makes White Sands special is that it's made out of gypsum sand. According to the National Park Service, gypsum sand is considered rare because gypsum is a water soluble mineral. It dissolves in water like sugar in iced tea. So it's even rarer to find gypsum sand in the form of dunes. And with White Sands spanning over 275 square miles, it's the largest gypsum dune field in the world. At the end of the road, we found a place to park and got out to explore the dunes. Something tells me this may have been Hatch's first time experiencing sand, because this was his reaction. Is he making it? Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get her. What do you think? I think he likes it. <laughs> that was so cute. But it didn't stop there. Hatch caught a major case of the zoomies running around, snorting sand, just having the time of his life. Catch! Yeah! Oh my god! He loves it! Hey baby! You had sand? Oh my 
I cannot tell you how ecstatic we were to see Hatch so happy. At this point in time, he had been with us for only four months. So seeing his transformation from a shelter dog to now was just incredibly heartwarming. He made this trip extra special. He's already falling asleep and we are not even out of the national park yet. <laughs> He wore himself out. Now that we were thoroughly tuckered out from the day, let's go check out the campground. We were staying at the Las Cruces KOA, located about an hour west of the National Park. We booked a back-in patio site with full hookups that came with a picnic table, grill, and fire pit. We also scored a corner site giving us a little extra room. All right, this has got to be the most luxurious KOA campsite we've ever had. It's really beautiful. Yeah. We've got the whole patio. we got mm -hmm. fire thing. pit over there and pretty much a whole yard for hatch too. It's great, not to mention a huge, yeah. beautiful view. Here's the view of the mountains way out there. It's really Russia, cool. New Mexico. Who yeah. Thought? yeah. Along with the tent and RV sites, there were also cabins, a pool, an outdoor camp kitchen, showers for people and dogs. What do you think, Hatch? You want to get a bath? <laughs> it's like, no, thank you. Hatch. Nope. Hatch. I know what that is. Go up in here. <laughs> no. A play area, dog run, a walking path to a community fire pit, and an indoor clubhouse with sleds for the sand dunes. The view from our campsite at night got even better. We ended our geologic journey by cooking dinner on the grill, overlooking the sparkling lights of the city. Next time on The Way We Did It. We trade out snowy Colorado for a sun-soaked week in Arizona. If you'd like to join us on more adventures, be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button. And consider joining our Patreon for extra perks like travel guides, bloopers, and digital photographs. It helps to support our channel so we can continue to show you the way we did it. We just ate lunch next to the world's largest pistachio. What do you think about that? That's unreal. <laughs> Hold on, God, that's nuts. <laughs>